Good morning. Welcome to a special re version of Special Report. Uh, Doug Ford today is speaking at 10.30 a.m. instead of 1 p.m. If you're watching this at 1 p.m., this was recorded earlier at 10.30. Well, today, Doug Ford is also still in Northern Ontario. He's going to be with uh, Greg Rickford, like he was yesterday, who's the Minister of en Energy, Northern Development and Mines, and the Minister of Indigenous Affairs, as well as John Yabakowski, who is the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. They're going to be uh, at the, uh, the Cote Gold groundbreaking ceremony, so we'll carry that for you in just a few minutes uh, when they go live. Okay, time to go over for some weather. What's up there, Weather Daniel? Thank you very much, Chris, and hello, everyone. Hope everybody is enjoying their Friday. We are going to take a look at our camera, which is sponsored by wirelesscom.ca. Check out their website. They've got all kinds of telecommunication services available, or you visit them on White Oak Drive. Uh, we are looking at some sun today. Uh, there was some fog burning off in the morning, and we are going to see a nice, comfortable day that is above seasonal. That was the reward for the frost last night. So do get out and get to enjoy it there down at the waterfront. Maybe get for a walk, as it'll be a perfect day for it before the rain moves in this weekend. So as mentioned, we will see overnight uh, low of 8 tonight and then getting into Saturday, things will cloud up in the morning. Periods of rain will begin and winds will become southeast 20 kilometers in the afternoon and we will see a high of 17 and a low of 12 overnight with periods of rain. That continues on Sunday with periods of rain throughout the day, a high of 18. Uh, overnight though, we will see it clear out. The winds will really pick up on Sunday to push through that system and we'll see a low of seven overnight on Sunday. And that makes way for some sun on Monday, 16 degrees and eight degrees overnight. So a nice day on Monday. Then we will see some sun and cloud, a mix of sun and clouds on Tuesday and a low of nine on Tuesday night. Things are overcast for Wednesday, 21 degrees and a low of 12. And then on Thursday, we see some rain again. Right now it's looking at like 40%, so we'll see how that goes. And then Friday, we're back up to 14 degrees and mix of sun and clouds. And our lows are between 12 degrees there on Saturday. We're down to seven on Sunday. And then we're back up to 12 on Wednesday and then back down to eight on Friday. So as you can see, they're kind of bouncing all over the place this time of year. It's basically what we have to deal with. Do want to mention a thank you to our sponsors once again, wirelesscom.ca for our camera. And then for our weather, Northern Lights Detailing, which is located at 632 Great Northern Road. All kinds of detailing packages, car washes, window tinting, need your car vacuumed, yeah, they, they handle it all. Just go see Marnie over there and she'll take care of you. So that's the outlook for the next few days as well as your seven day. I'm going to send it back over to Chris. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much, Weather Daniel. Greatly appreciate you doing the weather for us. And thank you to Northern Lights Detailing for sponsoring the weather. Also, thank you to KC Securities for sponsoring Special Report at 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. every day. And then also when we go on at special times such as today. Now, we literally just got the numbers in for COVID-19 in Ontario today. They just came in on my phone, actually. Uh, so we have over 200 new cases today. 213 new cases of COVID-19. Uh, they did 32,500 tests uh, of the cities with the most cases. Toronto had 71, Peel Region, which is like Mississauga, Brampton area, had 38, and 37 new cases in Ottawa. That's quite a jump for Ottawa. They've been having sort of mid-teen numbers uh, for the past week or so in Ottawa. They had 17 yesterday, and it popped up to 37 today. Now, Christine Elliott has issued a statement. Uh, she said that 26 of our Public health units had five or fewer cases and 18 were reporting no new cases at all. Here in Algoma District, we had no new cases that we know of so far. Uh, and 67% of today's cases are people under the age of 40. That is a trend that we've been seeing for quite some time now, almost two months, basically since we moved to stage three. The reasons for that is simply because young people are walking around and going to work again. They're traveling on transit. They're also uh, quite often, they work in retail and in food. So they're now out in the community more and being exposed to the virus. Now, uh, as I mentioned off the top, we're waiting for Doug Ford's press conference today. And yesterday he was in Sudbury. Uh, he announced $14.75 million for mental health. 
He announced this yesterday at the Northern Initiative for Social Action, which is in Sudbury. Uh, and what this is, is it's an increase to mental health and addiction services across the province. Uh, Ford said, we know this virus has had a wider effect. It shows itself through isolation, burnout, depression, and anxiety. Our frontline workers are not immune. Our young people are not immune. Whether you work in a hospital in downtown Toronto or long-term care in Sudbury or live in a flying community in the far north, I want all Ontarians to know that your mental health is as important to us as your physical health. Okay, uh, Ride for Women in Crisis. 27th annual ride is coming up. It's the Biker Rights Organization. Uh, which will be doing their Ride for Women in Crisis. Uh, they are a motorcycle enthusiast who stand together in common interest to make the government law enforcement agencies aware of common necessity for reasonable and fair motorcycle legislation along with safety, education, and public awareness programs. Okay, on Saturday, September the 12th, that's tomorrow, they're going to hold their 27th ride in support of women in crisis here in Sault Ste. Marie. Each rider is asked to donate either a toy or gift card to participate in the event. Each year they generally have over 100 riders. If you wish to participate, uh, the ride starts at 11 a.m. on the a &W restaurant uh, here in town and it is also the donations. You can also just drop them off at the a &W restaurant as well on Saturday morning. If you don't want to participate in the ride and you just want to make a donation for the Women in Crisis Center, you can. And it's also, uh, you can, all of the donations are going to the Women in Crisis on behalf of the Biker Rights Organization. Uh, this morning, stocks are up across the board. We've seen gains in both the S&P, TSX in Toronto. Uh, went up 100 points. Dow Jones went up 139. S&P is up 20. NASDAQ Composite is up 95. And now we're going to do a little bit of sports. Oh, we got uh, the podium coming up there. Uh, we're going to pop over there now. Here's Doug Ford. Hey, to this uh, historic event there. So I'm going to start it off. Uh, I am going to say a few more words down uh, uh, later on. So I'll just start it off with an uh, opening prayer. So if I get everybody to stand. We thank you, Creator, for giving us this beautiful day to celebrate this uh, uh, historic event for the First Nations of this traditional territory, the towns of this traditional territory, and the Northern Ontario people that will all thrive and benefit from the opportunities that are going to be available through this uh, project that we are all here to, uh, to uh, have this ceremony for. I'd like to thank the Creator for giving us the sun today that provides the heat and the warmth for our families, for our children, mothers, grandfathers, elders, the animals that provide us with the food, the berries and the, and the trees that provide us with uh, lumber for our homes and food for our children. And I'd like to thank the Creator for for the, for the breeze that's here today, that, that blows fresh air into our lungs, and to, to, which keeps us alive and healthy. And it's, uh, like they always say, it's a breath of fresh air to be out on a, on a sunny day like this. Uh, I'd like to thank the Creator for providing us with the rain that we have every once in a while that nourishes the ground that we walk on, that Mother Earth has provided for us to use without, without um, tarnishing their, the, this great uh, country and uh, land that we live on. And I'd also like to thank my mother, my, past, my uh, late father and my grandparents for, for giving me direction and guiding me to, to, to do what I've been doing for the last four years by representing my community and ensuring that they've, they get to be able to enjoy and prosper off the land, such as everybody else will be doing here in the near future. Uh, thank you, Creator. Miigwech. Thank you very, very much, Chief Wazano. Great to hear in great words great day. So I'm Gold. 
along with our partner Sumitomo Metalite Mining, would like to welcome you today to today's groundbreaking ceremony of the Cote Gold Project. Since announcing the, the decision to proceed with the construction of Cote in late July, we've been overwhelmed with the support we have received from this region. Today's groundbreaking ceremony marks another milestone for this project, one which we've been working towards for the past eight years since we first acquired the project in 2012. We expect to, Cote to be transformational for I Am Gold and for the region. While site preparation is already underway, construction activities will significantly ramp up in 2021. By July of next year, there will be upwards of a thousand workers in this area building Ontario's newest gold mine with an initial investment of about $1.8 billion Canadian. Beyond construction, Cote is expected to generate over 450 jobs during operations. An economic impact study we commissioned in 2018 estimated that Cote will generate over $5 billion in wages, direct and indirect, and more than $10 billion in GDP over the initial mine life. In our base case, the mine will be operational for 18 years after construction is complete. However, we are hoping to extend the mine life significantly with new resource discoveries like the adjacent Gosselin discovery, which we announced last year. I would like to welcome Don Charter, our chairman, who has joined us here today. The support of I Am Gold's board of directors has been fundamental in getting to this point, and I want to personally thank that group for their strong patronage. Our partner, Sumitomo Metal Mining, a global leader in the development and mining of non-ferrous metals, has been a key part of the Cote project development team. Sumitomo is a patient and constructive partner to I Am Gold. I cannot thank them enough for their continued support as we embark on this important undertaking. We are also honored today to be joined by Chief Chad Boisineau from Otagami First Nation and Chief Murray Ray from Flying Post First Nation. From day one, back eight years ago, we have strived to develop a close relationship with our host communities in a respectful and transparent manner. And we have been privileged to work with communities that engaged with us in the same spirit. We would truly not be here today without the support and leadership of these communities. Last year, we formalized our partnership with these First Nations by signing an impacts benefit agreement. We're proud of that agreement and look forward to fulfilling its comments and intent by developing this project together with these communities. I would very much like to take this time to publicly acknowledge the support this project has received from all levels of government as well. We truly value the support we have received from Prime Minister Trudeau's government, including senior members of his team. I especially want to recognize MP and Parliamentary Sec Secretary Paul Lefebvre and MP Marc Serret for their tireless advocacy on, their project, on this project and their support in ensuring we received our most critical permits in a timely manner. I would also like to take this time to acknowledge the steadfast support we have received from Premier Ford's government to move this project toward realization. We greatly appreciate Minister Rickford and his team for energetically championing the Cote Gold project, both internally and externally. We have been able to de-risk the project from a permitting perspective at the provincial level due to the efforts of Ministers Rickford, Urich, and Jakubowski and their respective ministries. The support we have received from both levels of, it, of in government ultimately enabled Gold, I Am Gold and Sumitomo to make the construction decision this year. We are also truly grateful to all of the local MPPs, as well as Mayor Bigger of Sudbury and Mayor Peary of Timmins and other municipal representatives for being such vocal, steadfast advocates for the project. This event really is a testament to the strong efforts and collaborative spirit of all the stakeholders involved. Unfortunately, senior representatives from Sumitomo Metal Mining could not be here today due to COVID-19 related travel restrictions. The president of Sumitomo, Akira Nozaki, has sent me a quick note to read on their behalf, so I will do so. 
So on behalf of Sumitomo Metal Mining, I would like to congratulate everyone on today's groundbreaking ceremony for the Cote Gold Project. I would also like to express my sincere appreciation to those attending this ceremony despite the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to be there, but due to the COVID-19 restrictions on entry into Canada, I was not able to make it work. I sincerely wish I could share in this happy occasion by personally offering you my congratulations. As we celebrate this momentous occasion, I would like to say a few words to you. The Cote Project is one of our three major projects around the world and an extremely important one for us. Since we joined the Cote Project in June of 2017, our engineers have worked with our key partner, I Am Gold, to increase the value of this project ahead of the start of construction. In the meantime, excuse me, with the warm and generous support of government officials, First Nations and our neighbours, the Cote project is now ready to begin construction. Once again, I greatly appreciate everyone's help in allowing us to arrive at this juncture. I am confident that once this project will come into operation, it will be one of the most prominent gold mines in North America and will get greatly contribute to the development of local communities for many years to come. I would like to commit to pursuing the planned construction program together with I Am Gold with the highest standards of health and safety and care for the environment and with the utmost care and professionalism. We greatly appreciate your continued efforts and dedication to accomplish our common goal by building and operating the Cote Gold Mine. And that is signed, sincerely yours, Akira Nozaki, President and Representative Director of Sumitomo Metal Mining. I would now like to invite uh, MP Marc Serre to say a few words. Mr. Serre. Thank you, Gord. Hello, bonjour, Annie. Wow, this is a great event today. As a local MP for Nickel Belt, it's really an honor to be part of this day ceremony in beautiful Gogama, one of the most beautiful areas in Northern Ontario and Canada. It's a great honor also, and Gord mentioned a lot of the invitees that are here today, but also want a special shout out and welcome to both our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, thank you for being here, and Premier Ford, also thank you for being here. This demonstrates why the mining sector is part of the solution for a greener and a more prosperous economy. I want to also thank both of them and all of you for your strong support for the Cote Gold Project, for your ongoing support in the mining industry, for your ongoing support for PDAC in Toronto, where Northern Ontario mining companies and supply and services businesses, members of Mine Connect, are showcased in the largest pavilion at PDAC, supported by FedNor. Northern Ontario is a regional hub and the heart of the Canadian mining industry. Why? Because of the Indigenous involvement. No other private industry in Canada employs as many Indigenous people as the mining sector. Innovation is rampant in the clean tech sector Quality, robust safety standards for our employees. Regreening solutions are abundant, just like the Sudbury story 40 years ago. Mining R&D within our post-secondary institutions and the private sector and the research centers like NORCAD and Sudbury. Merci, Ian Gold. Vous êtes partie de l'équipe de l'Ontario dans le secteur minier. Merci d'avoir choisi Gogama. Merci d'avoir choisi le Nord d'Ontario pour vos investissements. Le projet Côté Gold profiterait également tout le nord de l'Ontario sur le plan social, économique. Cela contribue également à créer de nouvelles opportunités de partenariat pour attirer d'autres investisseurs de divers marchés mondiaux. Félicitations à tous qui sont ici présents. Félicitations à MGO et la communauté pour ce moment que nous allons nous souvenir pour des années à venir. Annie Miigwech, a good friend, Chief Chad Boissonneau, from Itagami First Nations, Chief Ray from Flying Post First Nations, thank you. Thank you for working closely with I Am Gold. Thank you for your forward thinking. Thank you for embracing the community and the entrepreneurship that you provide to the area to promote the culture, the heritage, and the tradition. And it's great to see Gord 
Again, President uh, CEO Ryman Gold, both Paul and I have met with Gord at, at PDAC. Every year at PDAC, you'll see the yellow T-shirts, I am Gold T-shirts going around the area. Great perseverance. And thank you, Gord, and your team at I am Gold for supporting Gogamo local businesses. This afternoon, you'll be meeting with uh, Jerry Tadbutt of the Gogamo Chamber of Commerce to provide some additional funding to the area. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, finally, Gord and the entire team at I am Gold, you can count on our federal government, you can count on local MPs, Paul Five and myself. My colleague, Paul, is also the uh, Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of Natural Resources. Paul continues to be a champion for the mining sector as his role as Parliamentary Secretary. We are both committed to support I am Gold and, his, uh, I am Gold and the employees. Alors, merci tout le monde d'être ici. Une grande journée de cérémonie pour célébrer l'ouverture d'une mine qui va apporter beaucoup d'importance ici dans l'Ontario. Thank you so much, Miigwitch. Alors, je demanderai maintenant à mon collègue Paul Lefebvre de venir dire quelques mots pour inviter le premier ministre. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Marc. Quelle belle journée. What a beautiful day. This is a great day for Kogama, great day for Metogamy, great day for Flying Post, great day for Timmins, great day for Sudbury. It's a great day for Northeastern Ontario, and this is a great day for the mining supply sector of the whole area. This is jobs, jobs, jobs that are coming here, and responsible you know, extractions that are going on right in Northern Ontario. I really want to take this opportunity to, you know what, at, this is the first time ever in this area that we have a Prime Minister come and join us. So I am thrilled, and I was thrilled, when I invited the Prime Minister to come, and he jumped on the opportunity to come and see us all right here and to share in this beautiful day. Donc, sans plus tarder, le très honorable Justin Trudeau, Premier ministre du Canada. Bonjour à tous. Merci, Paul. Merci, Marc, pour cette introduction. Et merci à chacun de vous pour le travail exceptionnel que vous faites en représentant les gens de Sudbury et de Nickel Belt. Je sais à quel point c'est important pour vous que les gens de la classe moyenne aient accès à des bons emplois solides, alors c'est encore plus merveilleux de vous avoir parmi nous aujourd'hui ici. It's great to be here today with Premier Ford, Doug. It's always so good to see you again. We also have Sudbury Mayor Brian Bigger and Timmins Mayor George Peary. And I'd like to take a moment to thank Chief Boissonneau for his welcome and Chief Ray for joining us and I am Gold CEO Gord Stoddart for welcoming us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize that today marks 19 years since the horrific terrorist attacks on September 11th, 2001. Today, we remember the people we lost in this unthinkable tragedy. They were neighbors, friends, and family. As we pay tribute to their lives, Let's also remember the bravery and the sacrifice of all the first responders who arrived on, the, arrived on the scene and rushed into buildings as others were fleeing. À l'occasion de la Journée nationale de service du Canada, nous rendons hommage aux gens de partout au pays qui mettent leur vie en danger pour aider les autres. Au cours des derniers mois, les Canadiens ont été témoins des immenses sacrifices des femmes et des hommes qui sont aux premières lignes et qui ont travaillé jour et nuit pour assurer notre sécurité. Au nom de tous les Canadiens, merci pour tout ce que vous avez fait et continuez de faire pour notre pays. It's great to be here at the groundbreaking of the Côté Gold Mine. I know this is not just big news for the people of Gogama, but also for folks in Sudbury, Timmins and right across Northern Ontario. During construction, this project will create more than a thousand good jobs for people in the area, as well as 450 full-time positions once it's completed. This project was made possible by international partner Sumimoto Metal and went through an environmental assessment done by Environment and Climate Change Canada. We introduced the Canadian Minerals and Metals Plan to support projects just like this one. Projects that make Canada a great place to do business and create and protect good, lasting jobs for Canadians. Plus tôt cette année, 
Je suis allé au Congrès mondial sur l'exploration et l'exploitation minière de l'Association canadienne des prospecteurs et entrepreneurs à Toronto. Je me souviens d'y avoir parlé de la rapidité à laquelle se transforme l'économie mondiale et des raisons pour lesquelles le Canada doit être un chef de file dans le secteur minier afin de conserver de bons emplois dans nos communautés. Évidemment, dans les mois qui ont suivi, l'économie mondiale s'est transformée. Mais une réalité n'a pas changé, celle de l'importance des projets comme celui-ci pour les travailleurs, les familles et pour notre économie. Plus que jamais, nous aurons besoin d'une relance économique inclusive et équitable pour tout le monde. Voilà pourquoi c'est formidable que voir que les Premières Nations avoisinantes, la Première Nation de Flying Post et celle de Matagami, sont également partenaires de ce projet. C'est un exemple de plus qui montre que lorsqu'on travaille ensemble, nous pouvons créer de bons emplois pour les communautés d'un bout à l'autre du pays. There's no doubt that the last few months have been hard for a lot of businesses across the country because of COVID-19. And the virus is still a health threat around the world and here at home. So as we safely reopen our economy, it will take time for us to make up the economic ground we lost to the global pandemic. But this project shows how our economy is getting back on its feet. International investors know that Canada is a good place to do business. Even as we face tough, tough economic times around the world, Global investors have confidence in Canadians. Right now, we have an opportunity to build a more resilient Canada, a Canada that's healthier and safer, more inclusive and fair, a Canada that's both greener and more competitive in the global economy of the future, tackling the threat of climate change while creating good jobs for years to come. As anyone in the mining industry already knows, we can't solve climate change without strong leadership from the natural resources sector. Just take the Borden mine, which became Canada's first all-electric mining facility. Innovations across this sector will be crucial for a green recovery and will help drive the clean transition that we need. From the nickel and cobalt that are used in batteries for electric vehicles and solar panels, the mining sector is really important in building a better future for us all. So our government stands ready to work with companies to build that more resilient, healthier country where everyone has a real and fair chance to succeed. Ce secteur a la possibilité de créer de bons emplois durables pour les Canadiens, de stimuler notre économie et de paver la voie de la relance verte. Et cela commence par des projets comme celui-ci. Nous allons continuer de travailler avec tous les ordres de gouvernement afin d'assurer un meilleur avenir pour tous les Canadiens. Merci beaucoup. Je suis maintenant très content de céder la parole au Premier ministre Ford. Doug. Well, first of all, Good morning, everyone, and great to be here with the Prime Minister. Every time we get together, we seem to be having great announcements. So this is great when you're, everyone's pulling in the same direction and, and working together that uh, we've been working together from day one in the COVID, and I appreciate the Prime Minister's leadership, the Mayor's leaderships, the Indigenous communities' uh, leaderships. And it's great to be here in beautiful Gogama, the heart of Northern Ontario. Bringing jobs to every part of this province is a top priority of our government, and I'm honoured to be supported. I always say my all-star ministers, Minister Greg Rickford, Minister Yakabuski, they're both doing an incredible job and, and driving jobs forward. They're two of the hardest working ministers that I know down at Queen's Park for Northern Ontario. I'd also like to recognize Chief Bosano. Chief, thank you, and Chief Ray. This couldn't happen without you. Without your cooperation, there wouldn't be 450 uh, full-time jobs. There wouldn't be a thousand construction jobs. So we're very, very grateful and you're absolute champions and thank you for your leadership. But I also want to thank Gord. Gord, thank you and your team. And I am gold for investing and having uh, faith in not only Ontario and Canada within the indigenous community and thank you for our working with them. 
We can accomplish anything, as I said earlier, when we work together. After months of seeing COVID-19 hit our economy hard, we see a glimmer of hope. We see new opportunities right across our country and our province, and we take another step forward on the road to economic recovery. Today, we're breaking ground on an incredibly important project here at the future site of Cote Gold Mine. As you've heard many people say, again, creating 450 full-time jobs, that's 450 people that can pay the bills now. They can help out their families and their, and their communities, put food on their table. And during the construction, this project, as we've heard again, over a thousand, thousand uh, construction jobs that's so important for the region as a, as a whole. And those people are gonna be able to put a paycheck in their pocket and pay the bills and support the economy. It's absolutely incredible how one project can change so many lives in a community. And I know Minister Rickford, Minister Yakabuski will speak to this in a moment. But I just want to say, it's always a good day when we hear those words, we have a problem with red tape. I love when people tell me that because those are the areas that we can support you and it doesn't cost the taxpayers a second. It, I mean, a, a penny. It, it, it just needs the political will to get uh, moving forward. And, and I want to again thank the Prime Minister and all my ministers for uh, pushing this forward. And that's exactly the case for, for this project. We were able to work with the Ministries of Energy, Minister of Natural Resources, and, and Minister of Environment. And the environment is, is critical. We go through the process and uh, streamline approvals, remove roadblocks, and make sure the project got shovels in the, in the ground. We're ready to get Ontario back on track. Ontario is a mining powerhouse around the world. We're a leader when it comes to exploration and, and production. Ontario's mining sector contributes $10 billion directly to Canada's GDP, employs over 71,000 people across our great country. After years of delay and decline and neglect, our government has been able to work with the industry partners to breathe new life into the sector and attract new investments. We've also worked closely with local municipalities, community leaders, and of course, our Indigenous partners. And we need to keep going. With every shovel in the ground, we're taking another step towards recovery. Another step to ensuring no part of Ontario is left behind. We will work together to build a better, stronger future for the people of Northern Ontario and for the people across this great province. And we won't stop until every single community, every single business, and every single person in this province is back on their feet. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. And I'd like to invite one of our colleagues up, MPP, Michael Mantha. Michael, you're doing a great job too, my friend. All the best. Is Michael here? There you are, Michael. Thank you. Sorry, there's been a slight change in the program. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to actually invite uh, MPP Jelena, France Jelena, um, uh, to come up and present a certificate, I understand. My no problem. All good, all good. We work as a team. Good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Annie. Bougeot. My name is France Gelina, and I'm the MPP for Nickel Belt. I would like to welcome Chief Ray, Chief Boissonneau, or not Premier Ministre, Monsieur Justin Trudeau, uh, Premier Ford, the mayors of Sudbury, Timmins, mes bons amis de Gogama, the Metagamy, the Bisco, the West Tree, the Shining Tree, tout le monde de Nickel Belt. Welcome to beautiful Nickel Belt. I do have colleagues with me. <laughs> You've been introduced to Michael Manta, who is our critic for um, mining. But Michael needs no introduction in this part. Michael was born and raised in Gogama and pretty much knows everybody that goes on around here. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Jamie West. Jamie West is the MPP for Sudbury. Uh, Jamie comes from 20 years in mining uh, he knows full well that there are good jobs in mining. 
and of course, Gilles Bisson. Gilles is the MPP for Timmins. He comes with 30 years being an MPP. Uh, let me tell you, this uh, uh, mine was a long time in coming, but Gilles was there every step of the way to bring us to this very happy occasion here today. That was a long time in coming. It was not easy, but I am gold putting the time, the effort, the energy to make sure that they had a success. When I first took their phone call in 2012 and the first meetings, um, let's just say that there was many hurdles, uh, but they overcome them one at a time. You are in beautiful Nickel Belt. In Nickel Belt, we have been mining since 1886. That's 134 years. You know what we've learned in 134 years? We've learned that you can mine in a way that is respectful to the First Nation, in a way that is respectful to every workers, in a way that is respectful to every community, in a way that respects the environment as well. You will find in Nickel Belt a trained and willing workforce. People that are used to getting up early and putting in a full day. You will find a mining supply and services that are ready to help you with whatever hurdles comes your way. And you will find in Nickel Belt a few mining giants also, such as Valley and Glencore, who know a thing or two about mining. Mining is welcome here. We have the knowledge, we have the body of knowledge to make sure that it is done in a way that is sustainable and in a way that allows you to succeed, all of us to succeed. I know that there will be a few hurdles coming, uh, but we will be there, my colleagues will be there, we will help you, this will succeed, because when there's good people like this all around, I know that success is there. Today is a happy day. Uh, Cote Mine is finally here. And I do have a scroll for you, Gord, at two meters apart because I haven't got my mask. <laughs> it <That> goes. <laughs> no, Northern Ontario local MPPs are pleased to congratulate IM Gold Corporation in honor of the groundbreaking for the Cote Gold project. We have a little quote for you. All things are created twice. First, mentally, then physically. The key to creativity is to begin with the end in mind, with a vision and a blueprint of the desired result. And that comes, of course, from Stephen Covey. Best wishes from myself, from John Vantoff, Timiskim and Cochran, Jill Bisson, MPP Timmins, Michael Manta, MPP Manitoulin, uh, Algoma Manitoulin, and Jamie West. So this is all yours. At Merci a safe beaucoup. distance. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Chemiwech. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, MPP Jalina. Um, I would now like to uh, invite uh, Chief Boisonneau once more of Matagami First Nation to share with us his thoughts. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Let's see if I could uh, understand my wife's uh, writing here, so uh, bear with me. <laughs> so again, uh, Anin, Buju, hello. Uh, on behalf of Matagami First Nation, I'd just like to welcome uh, all the participants, our friends, our provincial and federal leaders, you know, Mr. Doug Ford, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and uh, there's so many people in uh, uh, politicians that I met here today, I apologize uh, if I can't uh, pronounce your name. Uh, uh, Mr. Mark Sierra, who is always reaching out to me to see how things are going, and uh, you know, all other party reps like Mike. And uh, Mike, uh, there's a history with me and Mike, and uh, i just like to share with you, hey, um, years ago when we grew up playing baseball, broom ball, broom ball was a big sport around this area, and a lot of people were surprised when they heard we played broom ball. They didn't know what it was, and uh, they thought it was just chasing a ball around with a bunch of brooms. Uh, well, probably that is exactly what it is. 
So then uh, then we converted over to hockey and that. But you know, growing up with Mike uh, during the years and that, and then uh, you know, as we get older, we we kind of separate and go our different ways, uh, have families. Uh, Mike moved away to uh, to Duraville, and he was in the lumber business. Then the next thing you know, um, I find out he's uh, he's into the political uh, venue. So eventually, I ran into him there years later, and I just told him, I said, Mike, when you are when when you make Prime Minister, I got stuff on you, man. <laughs> so um, so to, to continue, I'd just like to say that, uh, you know, today is going to be a, a historical event that uh, fortunately we are able to have, considering that the virus that has plagued uh, many parts of this world. Today we start the, cel start the process of a prosperous journey for all stakeholders, local communities and their members, and many other communities that this project will support for the benefit of our families and future generations of the next 20 plus years. More importantly, I'd like to thank the Creator for the sacrifice that our Mother Earth has given us by providing the minerals that will be extracted for this and the vast amounts of employment opportunities this project will create to build and finally process the sought after resource. I really like to thank the elders and past generations who without their sacrifice, there may not have been such a long, uh, this may not be happening. There's, there's a long history and many stories that this site holds from decades of persistent exploration programs that uh, use a variety of past and present techniques to map out the minerals that lie beneath us. Stories and facts about the many faces that worked at the area of the deposit even myself, I, I worked here uh, 33 years ago in 1986. I, I've had the pleasure of diamond drilling underground when it was an exploration ramp. So it's, it's been on, on, um, on the go for quite a few years. We've seen uh, multiple groups of companies that came and went throughout the decades and, uh, and uh, it changed ownership uh, a few times, you know, such as Chester Miracle Resources, Osprey Gold, Trelawney, are a few of the names that I'm familiar with. And finally, our present partner, I am Gold and Sumutomo, who will now take us to a higher level of certainty that we can continue to enjoy the area and all the other resources that Mother Earth provides for us, such as hunting, fishing, traditional medicines, and are, are among some of the, the fruits that we utilize. And also being able to continue to teach our young generation the traditions and history of this area by being able to stay in the area for the jobs that are much needed for many people that continue living in this unique and diverse landscape in traditional terry of metogamy, flying posts, and gogama. Um, the topography where the two main topography in this area and the two main industries where forestry and mining have dictated the lifestyles of the past and present. We did have other opportunities such as the MNR and the CN Railway who also contributed to some of the success stories but also some not so good stories that had devastating impacts on the community members and the people of the region. Remember not long ago, we had uh, the big derailment in the area and it was unfortunate. Uh, as a parent of two sons and a grandparent of two beautiful grandkids, grandsons, I sometimes share my memories of this, of the changes that I've seen over the last half a century, such as remembering that, uh, it doesn't seem that that long ago that uh, the only access of getting up here when I was growing up in Sault Ste. Marie, when we come to visit was by train and we had to drive to Cape Royal and catch the train to come up here because there was no highway through here. So that's how old I am. And uh, my, my kids, they look at that and they, you know, they can't believe that uh,
Even though we can't always meet in person, we can still listen. Even though schools are closed, help is still available in your community. Even though you may be worried, services and supports are still here. In stressful times like these, families need mental health supports more than ever. We are here to make sure you can stay connected to your community and culture. Nous savons qu'il peut être difficile de rester à la maison, mais vous n'êtes pas seul. And we know asking for help for yourself and others can be hard. But there are people in your community who are ready to support you. No matter your age, gender, sexual identity, race, or culture. No matter the day, time, or issue. We're here to help. December 21st, they're going to sacrifice a young girl. Escape through a narrow underground high-tension electrical tunnel. 